Okay, uh, so I'm uh, Andy C. I'm a professor at the uh, University of California, Davis, a professor in the Department of Environmental Science and Policy. Okay, so uh, to describe uh, the overall theme of what I do, even as to a non-expert, it is actually kind of like what I would describe to my parents or somebody I'm sitting next to in an airplane. And, and uh, I am an ecologist, and uh, many of the questions in ecology have to do with trying to understand why some species are doing well and others are not. Uh, both in the original sort of world they've always been in, the habitats they've always been in, uh, but acknowledging that in the modern world things have been changed for most things, plants and animals. And so what ecologists do a lot of is trying to figure out well, why some species are doing well, others not, what kinds of factors affect that, and what kinds of uh, ways in which they're built, uh, their traits that they've evolved uh, influence how well they do in the modern world. So uh, I've asked, uh, what do I do on a day-to-day -day basis? Uh, that's kind of a cool thing, because actually what uh, university professors do, in my view, is almost the ideal lifestyle in that, uh, in fact, even ecologists in particular have the ideal day-to-day -day lifestyle in that uh, we have teaching, and teaching is fun. We do research, that's fun. Uh, actually doing research and sort of mentoring with graduate students and uh, you know other younger scientists, postdocs, is fun. And for an ecologist, so each day we tend to spend some amount of time doing all of those. Uh, and as an ecologist, it actually means some of the day uh, is spent going out and not spending the whole day in the office, but instead means getting out there and traveling to some field site that's often quite beautiful, get away from campus, do something outdoors, work there for a few hours, come back. Uh, so I think largely, I think I've got the ideal lifestyle. Yeah, so on the question of what inspired me to uh, get interested in biology and move into this particular field of ecology and behavior, uh, that actually has the interesting complication that when I started college, I was actually a, first I was a math major, uh, because I'm pretty good at math and I continue to integrate uh, some theory into my work. Uh, but I decided that math majors were a little nerdy and I wanted to get into something else and I actually got into art for a while. And it turns out that art includes the training of actually seeing uh, the natural world better as opposed to uh, what most of us do is actually ignore what really is what's around you, but artists actually are trained to take a good look at what does this object actually look like? What is its shape? What is its color? What is its texture? How do things relate to each other? And somewhere in there that science and art actually came together in, in the form of where I also like nature and just being outdoors. And so somehow those all came together to be biology that included uh, field biology and ecology, and in particular animal behavior because that's where you uh, not just sort of collect samples but you actually stop and watch the animals and see what they're doing. Yeah, so for the inspiration uh, in my career, I, I can identify a couple of the uh, uh, professors I had early in graduate school. Uh, and it just turns out their names were Bill Murdoch and Bob Warner. One was uh, mostly an ecologist and the other is mostly an animal behaviorist. And they had the combination of uh, doing work that was interesting and being actually interesting general human beings. They had a nice uh, breadth of interests, uh, but also as scientists they thought big. They thought in terms of big questions rather than sort of just understanding, you know, one organism and what it's doing. They thought in terms of big, big questions in biology and that, that continued to shape my, my career. Yeah, on uh, sort of outlining the path that I took uh, and opportunities along the way, uh, there, you know, I think I ended up with a fairly straight line that as an undergraduate, uh, though there was this uh, interesting thing maybe where I started with math and art and things like that, but once I settled into uh, uh, behavior and ecology, then it turned out that I liked it, and it turned out when I applied to grad school, uh, I got into a great grad school, and after that, research went well, and I got a good postdoc and a good faculty position, and I guess at some level, uh, it's been almost too easy, but luckily it's always been pretty fun. Uh, but for me, actually, it kind of just flowed along, and 
right now it turns out I'm, I'm at what I think is actually the greatest university to be an ecologist it is University of California Davis great place to live loads of ecology I'm a happy guy <laughs> Yeah, so for the question of what advice uh, do I give to, uh, say, freshmen or, you know, just early on is uh, uh, particularly at, at uh, larger universities, uh, a key thing is, is, to, is to realize right away that even as a freshman, you can get to know your professors better and actually even get involved in research quite early on. Uh, that many people just sort of allow themselves to be swept into taking the big classes and uh, but in fact, right away early on, you can, even if it's not clear what exactly your interest is, is going to be, uh, you can walk into uh, faculty offices and talk to them and get it involved in research. And there are some freshmen who start doing research as freshmen and uh, have a much more rich and complete experience in, in college than otherwise. And so beyond actually getting involved in research, uh, taking advantage of the fact that most universities have some sort of travel abroad where you can end up doing research or just travel and get part of your, uh, part of your time in another place. Most people don't take advantage of that, but you really should. Okay, so yeah, my final question was uh, wh why is uh, what I do important and I think uh, I personally think that the research that I'm doing on trying to better explain why some species are doing better than others in the modern world where things have changed a lot and some species are doing really poorly but others are doing so well at their pests uh, that this is one of the major questions in the in the modern world is with humans changing things uh, we are concerned which species do well which don't and my research program is an attempt to uh, try to better explain these big patterns. Uh, but then, you know, the other thing that I do as a faculty member is certainly teach and work with uh, undergraduates and graduate students in their research. And, uh, you know, that certainly is also important. I, th I feel for like the teaching, uh, many of the students that I have, probably most of them are not going to be ecologists in the future. They are just in a biology class on teaching. And so then I think of it as, this is my one shot to get uh, people comfortable with and interested in and even excited about the natural world and even the importance of ecology and the environment. And so, you know, my goal of, of making them actually feel like they had some fun and they learned something interesting and appreciate a natural world also important thing.